This is my favorite place to be, the classroom. And I love teaching and I love studying. It's one of my my gifts that the Lord has given me. And with this COVID-19, I really want to talk about some of the testing that is going on so that you understand what the tests mean and how accurate they are and how they do it and just kind of a, a little overview. So I try to make this as simple as possible, uh, but we're going to go through it together. And I got everything written on the, on the board here for you. So uh, get a pen and paper and, and follow along. Uh, you might learn something that you didn't know. So real quickly, I just want to talk about uh, two different types of immunity. Now the first one is our immunity. That's a specific immunity and that involves memory and um, the ability of our immune system to recognize and respond to certain you know, harmful substances, bacteria, uh, viruses that come into our body. Now what happens is the immune system, think about it like keeps a file. So if you had chicken pox once, your body remembers the chicken pox and stores it. So now you have antibodies against it. Same thing if you had the flu. The, your body uh, creates antibodies against it and it recognizes it. So when the flu season comes again, you can fight it. Now, there is also what's called so then we have what's called artificial immunity, and that's when there is an exposure to a causative agent. It is deliberate. So say you give a person TB, because remember when TB was so bad, you know, we had smallpox. So what they did is they give the person a little bit of TB, or they give the person a little bit of smallpox. Uh, that artificial exposure then will build the immunity and create antibodies against it so that you don't develop the, in, uh, the illness when you're exposed to it. So just keep that in mind. You know, there's been a lot of controversy with um, obviously vaccines and we can touch on that a little bit later. But what I really want you to just understand that there's two different types of immunities. Now, we have tests where the testing comes in. We want to test for the presence of the virus. Uh, and, and what we do is we're really kind of looking at our immune system and the, the, the RNA, the DNA. We're looking at if there's presence of antibodies. And so right now with this COVID-19, there are a couple tests that they are doing. Now, one of the tests is very popular. And you've probably heard of it. It is called a PCR test. It is a, it is a, um, a viral RNA uh, test that um, is actually looking for the presence of the virus by using what's called a quantitative reverse transcriptase polymer chain reaction. Don't, don't worry about the big word, but just know that it's not trying to look for the antigen, okay, but it's looking for the viral RNA, which is something very, very different. So what they do is they take a swab and they put it on the back of your throat, so after they collect the swab, what they do is they put it in a liquid. And what that does is it releases the viral RNA from the swab in the solution. And then what happens is this viral RNA is extracted from that solution. And then it's, it's what they call then subsequently amplified, which is by reverse transcription, PCR. Now, um, this is the thing, you know, like when patients have pneumonia, they do like a, a nasal pharyngeal, they do oral secretions, they do the lower respiratory tract, they'll do sputum, they do, they do a lot of testing. Um, and that's exactly what they're doing right now with the COVID. There are some issues because say, even if a person has pneumonia and it's in the lower respiratory tract, they could actually test negative. And it's the same thing with the COVID test they could actually test negative um, and still be infected. And why is that? It's because at the time of testing, their viral load may not be like up and, 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 and uh, fighting this uh, virus. So it may come back that you're negative and the problem is you go home and you really are infected. Now the other issue with this PCR test is it's, it, it's not testing for the live virus. So, and I know this may be hard to understand, but it's, it's, it's the detection of the viral RNA. So that doesn't necessarily mean that the virus can be transmitted from that patient. So you see the testing really is, I mean, there's testing, but there's a lot of faulty stuff with this testing. 
though, that is still the best way that we are seeing in the medical field to test patients and staff. A lot of staff will get tested before they leave and before they come back on shift. Now, it also is very dependent on the person taking the sample. I, when I was a nurse, I had to do many of the, the tests with the swab for pneumonia and strep. And you have to be very clean with your technique. And you know you have to be very um, you have to be very specific of where you put it and how you put it back into the container. And, and so if there's any a breach in that 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 um, procedure, you could really you could mess up the results and they might not be accurate. So you know it also is dependent on user, <laughs> the person who's using it and performing it. Now the other type of testing is the serological testing. Now what that does is it's going to test for, for specific antibodies, um, but there is some drawback too. The antibodies don't usually show up until you know your immune system is fighting that virus. Um, but it, you know it is testing for uh, the IgM, the IgA, the IgG. Those are all the antibodies that are typically in our blood. And in fact, that's what I monitor with my multipoloma. That's really it's it's kind of the standard uh, for. So one of the big problems is that you know there's that incubation period. I think there's like seven to ten days. Well, this 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 again poses a problem with the serological test because again your your uh, protective immunity may not, um, you know, be in fully engaged. So, you know, that's, you know, that kind of makes it um, an issue. Uh, and it's not really useful then in the acute illness, the setting of an acute illness. And again, one of the other things about the antibody test is you first have to get the patient's blood, and then you have to find the antibodies in the blood. And it's just, it, it's a it's a long process. So with that being said, hopefully you understand a little bit more about some of the tests out there. There's the blood test, the serological test, which is looking for the specific antibodies. There's the PCR test, which is testing to identify the viral RNA. Uh, there are issues with both tests, but the good thing is there is testing. Now, with that said, I want to read you, uh, this is from a scientist who um, wrote about the different testing. And, you know, there's been a lot of people talking about everybody needs to be tested. We need to make it a mandate. Everybody. Well, okay. Uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to read what he said. And maybe you can get a little bit more clarity on why that might not um, actually be realistic. He said, we must recognize that we are dealing with a new virus, an unprecedented pandemic in modern times and in uncharted territory. With this in mind, in the absence of either proven effective therapy or vaccine, diagnostic testing, which we have, becomes an especially important tool in forming patient management and potentially helping to save lives by limiting the spread of the SARS-CoV-2. What is the most appropriate test and for whom and when? Hypothetically, if the entire world's population could be tested all at once with a test providing 100% specificity and sensitivity, and he put unrealistic, obviously, we might be able to identify all infected individuals and sort people into those who are at the moment in time were asymptomatic, minimally, moderately symptomatic, and severely symptomatic. The asymptomatic and minimally, moderately symptomatic could be quarantined to avoid the spread of the virus. With the severely symptomatic managed and isolated in healthcare settings, contract tracing could be carried out to find those at risk of being in the incubation period um, by virtue of their exposure. Alternatively, testing for a host response, if again, the tests were hypothetically 100% sensitive and specific, could identify those previously exposed to the virus. And if we knew this to be true, which we do not, label those who are immune to the virus, who could be tapped to work and um, in settings where potentially infected individuals might otherwise pose a, a risk. Unfortunately, these hypothetical scenarios are not reality. 
However, with the ideal situation as a guide, what we do have available as to test today should be carefully considered in terms of how they can be leveraged to move the current crisis closer to the ideal situation, especially in the absence of therapeutics or vaccines. And I'm going to tell you something, friends. I have an update on vaccines. Don't wish for a vaccine because um, they've already experimented with coronavirus and strains of a SARS and Corona with vaccines, and it's not good. So I will have more on that, but hopefully you enjoyed this quick tutorial. Hope it wasn't too long. And I'll get this uploaded for you Patreon friends, and we'll keep you educated and wise.